should say, let's make it more. Okay, so a rocket accelerates up at a constant rate of A, which isn't given in the problem, but it is given that it's a constant rate, okay, for 10 seconds. Then its engines fail and it goes into a free fall. And then from then on, from that point on, after it goes into a free fall, it hits the ground 12 seconds after the engines fail. From this, from the information given, you should be able to find A, you should be able to find the maximum height that it reached. You should be able to find the final velocity that it has when it hits the ground. Now, it looks like not enough info is given. Right? It looks like the only thing I gave you is two times. But there is enough info there. Right? So sometimes problem can be deceiving. It could, be, could, it could sound like, hey, there's not enough info there. You know. This is a good example of a two-stage type of problem. It's a two-stage problem. During the first stage, you have something going on. And then in the second stage, you have something else going on. OK? Um, so during the first stage, the rocket is accelerating up with A. And the initial velocity is 0 at the beginning of the first stage. And then after some time, uh, what is it, uh, 10 seconds, it has achieved a certain velocity, V final. Then its engines fail, it goes into free fall. So that V final at the end of the first stage acts as the V initial at the beginning of the second stage, OK? So in the second stage, we have V initial, which is equal to V final. And then the rocket is going to continue to go up. Then it's going to go down. It's going to hit the ground with some velocity. OK? So find V final, find H max and A. And not necessarily in that order. We could find A first, then we could find H, then we could find B either way, right? When you have a two-stage problem like this and there's different things happening in either stage, you can't do one-shot deal and try to solve the problem. I've seen people do this kind of, this problem like this. Y final equals Y initial plus V initial T, right? And then they say Y final is equal to, uh, Y final is equal to, uh, uh, let's see here. See, y final is equal to, let's say, uh, zero. Yeah, uh, y initial would be zero. V initial would be, yeah, you know what? You can't, even if you wanted to, you can't really do it. I was going to do it the wrong way, but you can't really even do that because v initial would be zero here. So, um, you can't really even do it that way. OK, so, so during the first stage, we got to do it with a general A, right? Um, so we got, we got to say, during the first stage, the A is some general number. We don't know what it is. But the V initial is 0, the Y initial is 0. The y final is equal to half a t squared. And we know that the t is 10 seconds for the, uh, the first stage. So you put 10 here, squared is 100, divided by 2 is 50. 
So at the end of the first stage, you've gone up 50A meters. Okay, so th that's the height. Okay. The other thing we know is that you're going at some velocity. Oh yeah, here's what I was gonna say a minute ago. The one common mistake is for people to, they do this far, and then when they get to the second stage, they assume that uh, V initial is zero. So they say, okay, it goes into free fall. So now they do the free fall, but they forget the fact that at the end of the first stage, the rocket was still going. So when the engines fail, it doesn't immediately stop. Okay, so they forget the V initial. Okay, so when you do these kinds of problems, and here, here's usually also another thing I've noticed, when you don't draw a good picture of the problem, especially in these two stage types of problems, when you don't draw a good picture, you're likely not to get it right. If you just go into the equations, okay? Look how I drew the picture. All, the, all my knowns, my unknown, my known, my unknown. Then I transferred this to this stage. See, I'm, I'm careful in drawing a good picture. So you gotta do that, especially with more complex problems. Draw good pictures, okay? Okay, so now I need to also come up for an equation for V final in terms of the A, right? V final is V initial plus AT. V initial at the beginning of the first stage is zero. And T is equal to 10 seconds. So V final is equal to 10A. So, so far I know at the, at, from the first stage, the rocket has developed a certain speed of 10A, which becomes the initial velocity for the second stage. And now the second stage is gonna carry it for uh, free fall, okay? So now we know that this is T is equal to 12 seconds. So now I can do the equation of free fall Y final is going to be zero, right? Y initial is going to be the original height from the end of the first stage, right? So that's 50A, right? So I'm putting my X, Y axis right here on the ground. My Y initial is 50A. My V initial is 10, uh, 10A. And my t is 12 seconds. Now here's another error. You can't put the t here is 20 seconds. You see? So there's a lot of pitfalls in this problem. <laughs> okay? You can't put v initial is zero. You can't put t is 20 seconds. That's the total time. The time for the free fall is just 12 seconds. Okay? Well, actually, from this, we are going to get the A. 